family Bible's time, studying through the Bible every chapter. And let me tell you, if the shoe fits, you put it on, buckle it up, and wear it. The shoe don't fit, you don't need to worry. And say what the Bible says, black and white. Ezekiel chapter 34. And a great comparison verse to this will be John chapter 10. I don't think we'll finish this chapter tonight. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Proph proph yeah, prophesy. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Problem one right now, you got preachers and pastors in the pulpit, and they are living off the people and not feeding the people. You can probably count the ribs spiritually on some congregations of the people sitting in churches under a fat cat, and I don't mean physical, I mean a fat cat man or woman, while the congregation is dying of malnutrition. Pastor should not be richer than his congregation. He should be feeding his congregation. And I don't mean having a soup kitchen either. So there are people who are starving. God told Ezekiel to say. They're not getting the truth. They're not getting the bread. They're not getting the honey. They're not getting the water. They're not getting the milk. They're not getting a meal, if you got what I meant. You eat the fat. You're eating off the people. He clothe you with the wool of the people. He killed them that are fed, fatted. Those that do get fed, those that do turn to the Lord, you kill them. As they did to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know why they killed Jesus? Pilate said because of envy. You get a guy in your, listen, I've been in many, well, a few churches. Where I have been seen as that fat calf that's learning, doing something, and the other sheep are turning to him, and let's get rid of him. Let's get rid of that guy. I've been there. We gotta kill him. But ye feed not the flock. How's that? The church is all over the world. They love God, they go to a church, and they starve. The disease have ye not strengthened. There are people in churches who are diseased, and they are not helped by the pastor. Now I know plenty of men who do work for and work for their congregation, do things for the congregation. I know a guy who, who's gone and fixed toilets for elderly members of his family and church. But I also know Christians who have been sick and they have had no help from the pulpit. Neither have ye, neither have ye healed that which was sick. Disease sick congregation. Neither have you bound that which was broken. Neither have you brought again that which was driven away.
be a shame for people to leave a church and not have the pastor go find out why. Maybe a cult got a hold of them. Maybe a family member who's unsaved got a hold of them. I've gone knock on doors before and it does nothing. Neither have they brought again that which was driven away. That's not of their own record. They fell in the hands of Satan. They fell in the hands of man. Neither had they sought that which was lost. It's it's their sheep, but the sheep is still lost. Where did he go? Oh, I had a man tell me once. Oh, I thought you fell off the, 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 the fell off the fell, ugh, fell off the planet. Really? When I was driven out by your own words, which you never apologized to me yet, and I apologized you two times and got a rash. That just went out personal. Didn't Jesus say in Luke they left the 99 to go get the one? And when they found the one, all heaven rejoiced? I look out of the congregation, I think of the people that used to be here. Well, what'd you do to get them back? If they left because of the truth, all right. They may have left under the misunderstanding and are afraid to talk to you about it. They may have left under the misunderstanding of somebody else. They have maybe fallen to a religion. Not everybody leaves angry. I left the church one time because of a complete misunderstanding. And the guy that was behind that pulpit, I thought if I sat down at his desk, I sat at his desk a couple times, and he's the Mr. Big Man, he's the preacher of the tree, and you're gonna, not going to tell him anything. I've got the word out of two or three mouths on that one, not only just mine. So when you feel that you can't sit behind the, the preacher's desk and talk to him, But with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. I have not been on a preacher like that. But there are preachers out there, you know, you do it my way or it's the highway. I've been on a church like that. This is this is the altar that's only the only altar of all churches. If God, if you don't give money to this church in your time, God's going to kill you. Well, I'm, we're talking about saved churches here. There, there are preachers in that pulpit that will, he will force them to tithe. Will force them. You got to do right, or God's going to give your family leprosy. It's not true. You can't use forceful taxes. You guys speak the truth. And they were scattered. They left. Couldn't stand it. Had to go find greener grass. Your grass was poison. Your grass was poison ivy. You had no grass. Because there is no shepherd. I thought he said in verse number 3, Woe to the shepherds. And then he turns around in verse 5, he said, There was no shepherd. If you're not taking care of your sheep, God now just says, You know what? I don't see no shepherd in that pulpit. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field. The wolves that Paul speaks so much about. Now, yeah, when Paul speaks, those wolves drove the people out. Listen, you need to know in your area who the wolves are, what religions are. And pastor, you better know to study that religion. If the Jehovah Witnesses are a threat to your community, you better know everything about Jehovah Witnesses to try to get them sheep back. But whatever religion is in your area, 
David said he fought a lion and a bear in a battle for a sheep. When they were scattered. When they were scattered, then came the beast. How do you like that? The sheep were caused to go, and then came the beast. The beast didn't come in, like Paul warns. Paul tells us the beast and the wolves will come into the church. Here are sheep that left the church. And they were attacked. My sheep wandered through all the mountains. Wandered. No guidance. Sheep are the dumbest animals in the world. You can, I have been told that you can have a fence and a gate. Move that gate over four inches and that, that sheep will stand there at the open way. Well, I want to get on the other side. What do I do? Walk through, stupid. He won't walk through. And upon every high hill, yea, my flock was scattered upon the face of the earth. He's talking about Israel. And they are. The priests were not taking care of the Israelites. That's why they're all, matter of fact, the priests were taking part. The Levites wanted to kill Jeremiah, who was a Levite. And Ananoth. And none did search or seek after him. How's that? You know another place, we'll stop here for a minute, that sheep are starved to death, a lamb? I believe one point Jesus said, feed my lambs to Peter, I think it was. And then he said, feed my sheep. And this big thing with churches... We got 5,000 saved. We got 10,000 saved. We got 13,000 saved. How many lambs did you grow up into sheep? After they got saved, where'd you send them? In the mountains? The high hills? You know what they were doing in the mountains and the high hills in Israel? They were false worshiping false gods. Yeah, you know, you can get people saved, but what do you do with them after they're saved? Today, we, we, we say you must be born again. If you become born again, you become a baby lamb. You need to grow. As, 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 as oh boy, how's it go? Peter says, as, as newborn babies desire to sin here milk that you may grow. you got to grow that lamb. Paul speaks of Timothy, his, his spiritual son, that he grew in the Lord. I'll tell you one way where you fail when it comes to sheep. You go out there, you witness to them, and they get saved, and you do absolutely nothing, no more with them. You don't get them into a sound church. You don't get them in the Bible. You don't get them to study. You just, hey, I just got a notch in my belt. Now, I'm upset because in prison I've seen three or four men get saved God using me, but I can't do nothing with them. And they're amongst wolves. I, the only thing I can do is pray for them. But that's not right. We spent more time with the sheep that we led to Christ, growing them up. There'd be a lot more, there would be a revival. There are a lot of sheep out there who are saved and have no idea what to do. And what they think they're doing is proper in the eyes of God, and it's not. Why? Because the person that led them to Christ done nothing with them. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. I know a guy who goes with videos and all that, and you know he, he thinks it's perfectly okay to to, uh, to celebrate Christmas. You don't know your truth. You don't know what's going on. You're killing your congregation because you don't want the truth. How many churches? I've seen pictures all through this month. I've seen churches with pictures, and how many uh, 
churches out there, when you go in now, you see a nice little wreath in the church. Do you know what that wreath means? What about the tree? You want to study the book of Jeremiah? What about your little egg hunt with the kids? You study the facts of life with those kids? There's only one thing that goes after an egg in life. So when you send your kids on an Easter hunt, an Easter hunt for eggs, you send your kids, you are calling your children little sperm. Sperm looking for an egg. And guess what happens I learned today, nine months later? Santa Claus is born. From Easter, the egg gathering, to December is nine months. How is that a quinky dinky? Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord God. Uh-oh. Now listen, if I haven't talked about you, if I haven't said anything about you, you play, like, hey, go, brother, go. Enjoy this message. I don't go visit my people. It does no good. Maybe they need it. Maybe they need you to come into that room and pray with them before a surgical procedure. I know a preacher who, who's wrong in doctrine, but he came and visited me during my time, you know, when they walked in a room and told me, oh, I don't think we need to amputate. I mean, that, that messed me all up. But he came and prayed, and he, doctor, he's wrong. My wife in the hospital, she got visited. You may not enjoy it, but somebody who's sitting in that bed, who, who can't do nothing but sit in that bed, they'd rather see somebody come in rather than, you know, the doctors and the nurses. And I know Christians out there who do come and visit you. That's great people. What about you, man, behind the pulpit? Well, you don't know. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey to the lion, to the bear, to the wolves. And my flock, the God's flock, God's people, became meat to every beast of the field. You know what God calls a person that's fallen to Satan in religion? He calls him a piece of meat. Because there was no shepherd. But verse 3 said there was one. Verse 7 says there's shepherds. And even though verse 3 and 7 say there's shepherds, God says, I don't acknowledge you as a shepherd. You may stand up there with your pastor such and such, doctor such and such, the reverend such and such. God said to me, I don't recognize you in that position. Aren't you supposed to be called a minister? Do you know what a minister does? Do you know what the word minister in the Bible is? I believe it said, and I think it was Mary, she ministered to the Lord. One of the ministers to the Lord, they took care of, helped. Because there was no shepherd, neither did my sh shepherds search for my flock. But the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Hmm. And that's physical food. The pastors got fat while the congregation got skinny. The pastor became physically fat while the congregation became spiritually dead. That ought not to be so. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Maybe God driven your people away, and giving you a congregation that fits your means. I don't know.
cause them to cease from feeding the flock, neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore. No more sheep, no more food. No more sheep, no more money. For I will deliver my flock from their mouth. Isn't that what David said he did with the sheep? Isn't there a passage in the Bible saying where a shepherd pulled out an ear? That they may not be meat for them. There are preachers out there who are going to stand before God and give a, a poor account for their sheep. And there are going to be preachers out there who are going to be blessed by the Lord Jesus Christ and to say before these men that are behind the pulpit rightfully, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Ser servant. Servant. For thus saith the Lord God, Luke 15, 4-7, and John 10, 11. Behold, I and even I will both search my sheep and seek them out. This is where John 10 plays in. The priests and the Levites have not done their job, so Jesus Christ came to finish the work. The church is not doing their job with, according to the Laodicean church age. You know what Jesus is going to do? He's going to come and call his church home. And make all his sheep, shepherds and sheep, stand before the Lord Jesus Christ himself, the chief shepherd, and give an account at the judgment seat of Christ. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day, that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and will deliver them out of all the places wherein they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. That is a reference to the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. When he comes and gets Israel. When they have run from the idol shepherd, the Antichrist. So we've been talking about the Antichrist too. You read what, what Jesus says in Matthew uh, 25? You didn't feed them. You didn't visit them. You didn't heal them. You didn't take care of them. You didn't visit them in jail. When you don't take care of the sheep, Mr. Pastor Boy, Preacher Boy, you are liking the Satan Antichrist. And all the nations that reject the Lord Jesus Christ and his Jews, his family, his kin, they'll be rejected. Verse 12 is a shepherd that's doing good. He's looking for his sheep, the one that got away. And Jesus said, I'm going to be just like him, even if it's a dark and cloudy day. I'm going after that sheep. I'm going to go get them. Because I may not be scared of the weather. That sheep is. And maybe that sheep that left your church... Maybe the Lord Jesus Christ is seeing what you will do for that little lamb. And I will bring them out from the people. And gather them from the countries. And will bring them to their own land. There's the Jews. 1948. And with 3721, which will come later. And feed them upon the mountains of Israel. They won't be worshiping false gods then. Not with Jesus there. By the rivers. And all the inhabited, inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in good pasture. No weeds that will harm them. No broken glass. Nothing wrong. He'll, you know a shepherd will, will take his sheep and bring them to a field. He'll go off forward 
into the next place. He'll look around for any weeds, any plants that will cause his sheep to have a belly ache or even kill them. He removes all sharp stones so they don't get cut. Sometimes they don't even know he's taken off to go feed his sheep. His sheep. And then he brings them in the next night. And they don't even know what the shepherd done. They just, hmm, this grass is good. Just keep on munching, munching, munching. Thank you. Thank you for feeding us. And yet there's more thank yous that we don't see that a true shepherd will do. So he doesn't do it for a show either. And while they're feeding, he's looking around looking for any wolves or anybody who wants to, to take on the sheep. You need to worry about football. You got to be a defense. You got to be an offense for the sheep. You got to be the right guard, the left guard for the sheep. You got to be the kicker of those animals that want to do harm. I will feed them in good pasture upon the high mountains of Israel. Shall their fold be? That's a group of sheep. That doesn't mean you fold the sheep in half and you know put them in a drawer. There shall they lie in good field. Oh, excuse me, lie in a good fold. Have you weeded the people out of your church? The goats? Have you weeded them out that will do the sheep harm? Have you weeded out them that will cause division? Or is their money in the plate too good? You do find divisions. You do find separation. You find Paul writing about people that you ought not to associate yourself with. There are some people when they come into the church, they need to leave. I don't care how fat their wallet is. They'll do you more harm in the in the people and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. All the best, all the good, all the it says a fat pasture. You know what the you know what the, the shepherds were doing? They were eating the fat. God gives fat back. God will fatten you up. Sometimes the sheep are just too stupid. They don't want to do anything. That's their problem. That's another study. A man behind the pulpit has a very big responsibility. He's a restaurant entrepreneur. He's got to feed the sheep. He's a medical doctor. He's got to take care of the broken and fixed disease sheep. He's a provider. He's got to go ahead and find things for the sheep. He's a hotel person for sheep. He's got to find him a place to lay down and rest. He's a nurse to the sheep. He's supposed to be a friend of the sheep. And you know what the sheep do? Because they love the shepherd. Then they give their wool. Then they give the, what they have to give to him. I will feed my flock. Psalms 23.2 I will cause them to lie down. Say it to the Lord God. You know, you know what the problem with sheep when we did Psalms 23? You got to make sheep lie down. They're too stupid. They're too busy. They're going 24-7. You got to sit them down and feed them. You got to calm them down. You got to give them time out of that world just to settle down getting with the Lord.
Sheep like grass. They don't like flowery messages. I don't know what happens if, if you give a sheep a lot of sugar. But I know if you give a human a lot of sugar, he gets diabetes, and that's a disease. And there's a lot of pulpits out there who have their congregation diseased by diabetes, by too much sugar and not enough salt. I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away. Lost, you know, he went on his own. Driven away, he was forced away. And will bind up that which was broken. I'm going to take care of him. He broke his leg. I'm going to help him. I'm going to find people in the church to, to, to give that woman... Food for her family and all that because she broke her leg or broke her arm. She can't go. She can't get around. I'm going to make sure that family is taken care of when entry comes to them. And will strengthen that which was sick. What more can you get from visiting a person that's sick right there? Strengthen. You're going to lift up, help, you know. Stay in there. You'll be on, you'll be back on your feet before you know it. Oh, when the doctors say you're okay, you can get you can get out of here. You know, just don't get you know, don't get too worrisome. People have troubles, and troubles bring them down. They need help. You know why you have these. Uh, Christian psychologists out there all over the TV and radio because pastors are not doing their jobs. Who else are they going to turn to? But I will destroy the fat and the strong. Something wrong with them, sheep. Something wrong with those pastors. I will feed them with judgment. Something wrong with that picture. And pun the, the expression talking about Israel. A wool beating shepherds are living high on the hog. And as for you, I mean, there are some people that get in the pulpit just because it's an easy job and easy money. They don't have to work for them. That guy needs to be tossed. That guy's probably not even saved. That guy will tell his congregation, if you don't tithe to the Lord, God's going to strike you dead. There are men that will up for a church and say, this is what I demand for pay. Behold, I judge between the cattle and the cattle, between the rams and the he goats. Matthew 25. I've been taking this with, with the church age today, but this passage in 34, if we were to go back and redo this, this chapter again, we can see the Antichrist with the nation of Israel. We can see a terrible condition in Ezekiel's time. Do you imagine what the temple's like under these conditions? Remember what it was like in, in uh, um, I forget, it was one of Eli's boys. I forget who the story is about that. And the guy brings his offering, and Eli's boys takes it out of the pot. The guy said, hey, you're not supposed to do it. Leave us alone. We're the priests. We can do what we want. And it's, it's cooked enough. Remember that? I think it was Sam. I can't just think. But they were, and, they, and then they would turn around. They were sleeping with the women at the temple. You know where those boys ended up. You know where dad ended up. You know what boy was born after that? Ichabod. You read 
what Ichabod means? I can think of some churches right now. I can write that above the door of the church. And the people won't even know what it means. Now, I'm not speaking about every preacher I know. I'm speaking about preachers I don't even know. But I know they're out there. And I said before, if the shoe fits, wear it. If it don't, enjoy. You know, the the best message I love is when the preacher preaches and he just goes right over my head and it ain't about me. Preacher can preach all the things he wants about money and stuff like that. I, I do what God tells me to do. But it's that message he preaches and when it hits me, that's the one I don't like. But be amazed that there are these preachers in pulpits in America and the countries in the world today that these starving people, while the guy in the pulpit lives, lives high in the hog. I know a guy in prison, he gets all kinds of money being in charge of the, uh, the, the prison ministry and all that. He's not even in a church. But look at the money he gets from the state of Connecticut. And all the messed up things he's got in that that prison with all the messed up doctrines, all those people, they're not getting fed. They are worldly things. They are all corrupted. They're all messed up. It's full of leaven. This guy's getting a big paycheck from the state of Connecticut. And so he's going to stand before God one day. And when a man like me comes into that church and tells those men, when you get out of here, this is the kind of church you need to find. This is the kind of church you need to leave. This is the kind of Bible that you need to read. This is the kind of Bible you need to throw in a garbage can. And he throws me out. God will judge you. I've been against. We're also looking at the Antichrist. We're looking at the Jews in the tribulation period. We're looking at the judgment of nations. Seems it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pastor? Oh, you ate what the sheep were supposed to eat. But ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures. You go in there and you eat and you tread it down. Then you have the sheep come and get what's left over. That ain't right. And have drunk of the deep waters. But ye must follow the residue with your feet. We saw you that the other night. Here's a nice cool brook. It's clean. It's crystal. You drink from them. them, 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 them. And when it comes time for the sheep, you, you walk across it and you get it all muddy and gooey. And it becomes mud. becomes tainted. And as for my flock, they eat that which ye have trodden with your feet. And they drink that which you have followed with your feet. 32.2 Therefore, thus saith the Lord God unto them, Behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle. Well, look at that. That was Joseph's dream. I mean, uh, Pharaoh's dream that Joseph interpreted. You know how we've gone from the nations, now we've gone to the, lead, to the spiritual leaders. You know why the nation is followed up? Because of spiritual leaders. You know why sodomy is now legal in America? How many churches are for it? And how many of those churches are represented by your Republicans, Democrats, Independent, whoever, blah, 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 in Washington, D.C.? How many members on Capitol Hill belong to a church that says it's okay to be a sodomite? Now, if they would preach the truth and tell you the truth, then their members of the church would say, hey, the Bible says that's wrong, so we can't vote yay. But if your church says it's yay, what are you going to vote for? You're going to vote against your church? How are you going to relieve a family that has a drunken father when the church you go to and take your family to allows a drinking from the pulpit? How 
how are you? Because ye have trust, you have thrust with side and with the shoulder, pushing them around, shoving them with the side and with the shoulder, and push all the disease with your horns. You have used your horns for an offensive weapon instead of a defensive weapon. Till you have scattered them abroad. Oh, so the sick and mainly you got rid of. You kept your clique. You kept your clan. You kept what you who you wanted and got rid of the rest. How's your church now? Is it a godly church or is it your church? Therefore will I save my flock. Amen. And they shall no more be a prey. And I will judge between cattle and cattle. Don't you doesn't say goats. And I will set up. Okay, now we're going back to truly. Never mind the church age. Forget I've been mentioned the church age. Now we're going back. To, I, I've been spiritually applying it, but darkly. I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them. Even my servant David. Remember I told you what David did for his sheep? You think God forgot that? God did not forget what David did for his sheep. David, you fought a lion and a bear. You know what I'm going to do for you? What, Lord? He shall feed them. He shall be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. Millennium. The second coming of David. <laughs> How's that one? My servant David, a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken it. Jesus Christ the King and his great 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 grandfather a prince. Don't you think that'd make David happy to have, him, have his Messiah right there, right right beside him, with all the nation of Israel out there? I will make with them a covenant of peace, and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land and cast him into the lake of fire into hell and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods you love that one do you know what the wilderness is going to be in the millennium it's not going to be a wilderness it's going to be a fruitful valley what a wilderness even the millennium the wilderness is going to be a great place to be not now and I will make them the places round about my hell a blessing. That's where the throne of Jesus Christ will be. I will cause the shower to come down in his season. That's the earlier and latter rains. As showers of blessing. The tree the field shall yield her fruit. The earth shall yield her increase. And they shall be safe in the land. And shall know that I am the Lord. Now I have broken the bands of their yoke. They've been under a yoke. That's what Jesus said. Take my yoke upon you. The Pharisees and Sadducees were putting yokes upon the people. I've got to stop the recording here because I won't be able to put it up. So hold on.